Bioshock Infinite is a rampage, a battle through the streets between a team of two and an entire city that's out to stop them. They take on police, the revolutionaries, the strange cult who worship the founder of the city like he's a prophet, basically anyone who gets in the way of them reaching their goal. It's far more action packed than you may expect from a Bioshock game, with a much higher body count than the series has ever had before. Rather than descending to the bottom of the ocean, this time it takes place in a city in the sky. But it's not just the setting that's changed. This is an entirely different kind of Bioshock altogether. Uh, hello. <laughs> it's about a man with gambling debts who's sent in to rescue a young girl who's being kept prisoner in order to clear off what he owes. As soon as you first step foot in the city, it's like entering what looks like a fairy tale paradise. Whereas Rapture in the first game had already gone to ruin by the time you got there, Columbia looks like a slice of heaven. But of course, you can tell something's not quite right here. In fact, it's very, very wrong. Come on! Are you gonna throw it? Or are you taking your coffee black these days? <laughs> throw in religious fanatics, a giant robot pigeon, and the ability to tear holes in the fabric of the universe, and things get a little crazy. As far as gameplay goes, it plays a lot more like other shooters at the time did. You can only carry two guns at once, and so are constantly swapping your loadout depending upon what you can find lying around. Try to keep you, stopped. you have a shield that recharges when you're not getting hit, so often it's best to hold back or hide in cover and wait until it's fully charged before getting back into the fight, something that Doom Eternal would probably try and slap you in the face for doing. But what raises the gameplay of Infinite above a lot of other shooters are three main things. One are the environments that you fight in. Your melee weapon doubles up as a kind of climbing hook, and when used in combat, this will have you leaping around, getting into better positions, and really take the fight to the enemy. It can even attach to the roller coaster like tracks of the sky rails to have you zipping around the sky, raining down terror from above. It's great to have this freedom of movement, turning a mundane firefight into something fast and exciting. Secondly, plasmids are back, or at least kinda, this time they're called Vigors and provide powerful superhuman abilities. These can really mix up the way you play things, and I find the Vigors more aggressive than plasmids were. Which goes along with the overall action feel of the game. Plus it's fun to toy with and manipulate the enemy to give yourself that edge. Thirdly and not least is the Disney Pixar princess herself, Elizabeth, who I've got to say is one of the best characters that you've ever had to escort around in a game. Sure, her story is interesting and all, but more importantly, she's actually useful. Firstly, when you first see this message, you can breathe a huge sigh of relief. You don't have to worry about her in combat, thank god. She also throws you things like spare ammo or health packs. She's a master of unlocking things because being locked up as a prisoner for so long, you learn a thing or two. And she can use her ability to tear reality, to bring in some help from a different parallel universe. And all of these things combine to create action that has a lot of options, all of which are fun, and make it stand out in terms of creativity, way above a standard shooter. But what I think the game does best, and what this series in general does best, is bring a setting to life, by showing rather than telling. By including all these small details, it makes the place feel lived in and part of a fully thought out city. The story is as much discovered as it is told, you learn through what you see. It can be creepy, and even when it's not, there's always a feeling that something's not quite right as you step into unfamiliar territory. My only real criticism of the game is that its difficulty is a bit all over the place, going from far too easy sections to parts that have you dying a lot, but still. It's a great title. Different, but still great. Thanks for watching.